Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mike, and thanks for jumping on here with me this morning. We're talking about listings this week, and the reason is because I hear this every day from so many of you. I really want to take more listings this year. Okay, well, how do you do that? Because I think that's a great idea. Uh, they always have said in this business, as long as I can remember, that you list to last. Right, I think that's actually true, but I think it's easy to say that I'm going to take more listings this year, but how do you do that? So uh, we're speaking this week all about where listings come from. Well, listings are the result of the specific actions that we take each day, right? So no actions, no listings. If your listing inventory isn't where you want it to be right now, then I want to go back over your weekly schedule for the past three or four months and let's take a look at what specific actions you're taking each day to generate listings. And if you aren't taking those actions, eh, then that's probably why you don't have any listings. If you want to change that, then I've just jotted down 12 different ways I can think of right off the top of my head to generate more listing inventory this year. And we started it off yesterday with the top two, and we call them the top two because they are the low hanging fruit for sale by owners and expire listings. I mean, come on, it doesn't cost anything. And these people actually put a sign in their front yard telling the whole world that they want to sell their home and they want to sell it right now. And you want to increase your listing inventory. Huh. I wonder if the two of you have anything to talk about. Okay. But moving on to today, number three on my list is, uh, are you effectively marketing to the people that you have in your database and your CRM? Remember what we said last week that NAR recently interviewed the top 150 real estate agents in the U.S. And those 150 said that 82% watch, pay attention. If you're daydreaming right now, if you're multitasking, stop. Pay attention to what the top 150 agents in the U.S. said. 82% of our business comes from referrals. People in my personal network that refer business to me. Are you effectively marketing yourself to your people? I guess that's not even the first question. Do you have a large enough group of people in your personal network to generate the type of referral business that you would like to receive? And are you effectively marketing yourself to them every week so that you stay the top of mind, credible expert? Because the gold sometimes can be found right in your own backyard. We don't have to go out and be searching for it. How about the people that you already know? Are we marketing? Well, I already know those people. Yeah, but are they aware of what you do for a living when the time comes, when they're in the moment? Do you... Have you established credibility with them, right? Are they ambassadors for you? Have you turned them into an ambassador for your business? If you haven't read the book, The Seven Levels of Communication, I again want to strongly encourage you to do that in regards to this subject. Number four on my list is building a referral network. That's a little bit different than your CRM. This is building a referral network. Uh, a few of you are participants in a BNI group, Business Networking International. And I think that's one of the more effective groups, but there aren't many of them, and it's hard to get in because they only allow one real estate agent per group. And that's one of the things that makes it so effective. So many of you would say, well, I've tried to get in, but I can't find one that's appropriate for me, or the one that is available to me is just way too small. I go, okay. Have you started your own networking group? Why do you have to join a BNI group or a Rotary Club or Lions Club or a Chamber of Commerce or anything? Couldn't you start your own networking group of other professionals and do something very similar? You could, but have you? Hmm, I don't know. 
the top 150 in the country say 82% of their business comes from stuff like that. I watch some of our top agents here that generate a large part of their business off of referral networks. Number five on my list, how about circle dialing? This is, you could take a listing that was right here in our own office. I would seek the listing agent's permission, but couldn't you call around that listing? It could be a just sold, it could be a, ju a just listed, right? Hi, this is Mike at Century 21. Just a quick call to let you know that we recently sold the Smith's house just down the street from you. Um, was curious if you've thought about making a move. Maybe you throw in that in the process of selling the Smith's house, we generated buyers that are interested in the community. Have you thought about making a move? Or we just listed the Smith's house down the street from you. I wanted to make you aware of that, let you know it was listed for X price. Wondering if you knew anybody who might be interested in moving into the neighborhood. No? Okay, well, oh, by the way, have you thought about making a move? Circle dialing can be a very effective tool. Are you doing it? Hmm. Number six on my list, geographic farming. Tried and true strategy, picking a neighborhood where you become the go-to real estate expert for that neighborhood. This strategy can take a little while to get established, Okay, it requires a lot of time and a lot of focus and a lot of dedication. It requires require acquiring the data, names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses for people that live in that neighborhood. But if you have access to that information, geographic farming is a tried and true strategy for developing listings in your business. Open houses. We think of open houses as a way to generate buyer prospects, but it can be a great way to generate listing prospects. And here's why. Number one, a lot of the people that are gonna come through your open house looking to buy also have a place to sell, right? Mm -hmm. And isn't it a great relevant reason for doing a little door knocking around the neighborhood? making the neighbors aware of when your open house event will be, inviting them to come, inviting them to let people in their personal network know about the home and come. And do you think that there's anybody else in the neighborhood that might be thinking about selling? It's a great way to find out. And my last point for today, but not for the week, you gotta dial in tomorrow, uh, your past clients, Oh, gosh, I, I really hope you're not losing contact with them, that you're staying really sticky with them. And with home prices going up 20% or more over the past three or four years, is it time for a little home equity checkup with your past clients? Maybe you sold them a house in 2019 or 2020. Do you think they might find it interesting to know how much equity they have in their home today? What their home might be worth today? I bought my home in 2019 and I am shocked to see one of my neighbors selling their home for almost 50, 55% more than I just paid for mine four years ago. That's crazy to me. And I do this for a living. And sometimes it creates a desire to move. So calling your past clients and offering to do a little home equity checkup for them uh, can be a great way to stay in contact and also to see, I don't know, who's ready to move again. Okay, there's eight so far. Which one of the eight is right for you? Or, got a better question, could you be doing a little bit of all eight each day? Well, I got to tell you, if you did, I think you'd be going out there and making it happen for yourself today.